Hi everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com and today I want to show you how I DIY decorated our front porch for spring by only buying plants from our local greenhouse. I'm going to share some fun DIYs and stay tuned to the end of this video where I share this recipe for whipped coffee with real espresso. Let's go. First things first, I went to our local greenhouse and grabbed a few plants for some annual planters. I didn't want to buy anything for this front porch makeover except for plants because I'm hoping to support local businesses as much as I can. I got some begonias and some other part shade and shade loving plants. I'll leave all the names for everything down in the description box below. I reused some old planters that I had from last year. There's a little crack in one of them, but I was hoping that once the plants grow, it'll cover the crack. I went on Pinterest and found a planter idea with shade loving plants. I love the arrangement of this and then used the plants that I found at the greenhouse that matched our climate and the shade level and went ahead and was inspired by that design. You might have heard the idea for planters that goes get a thriller, a filler, and a spiller. So the thriller is kind of the main focal point of the planter. And in my case, I'm going to use this large fern. It's small right now, but it's going to be hopefully large in the summer. And then for fillers, I'm using some of these coleus or coleus, not quite sure how you pronounce that, but I loved how these were variegated and had kind of that chocolate brown and green in them. And they're going to fill, but also they're also trailing but also they're going to trail a little bit down the sides of the planter too. So the fern is going in the middle back. These two coleus are going on either side of the fern. And then my begonia is going to go in the front and this is another filler, but it's going to add the small pop of color that I want for this planter. But most of the planter is just going to be some really beautiful rich greens and browns. I loved this one, it was a sweet potato vine. Uh, I think these look so nice in planters. But the nice thing about this one was that it has this rich deep black color, almost like a chocolate brown slash black color. It's also going to trail down, so it is my spiller. So the thriller, the focal point is going to be the fern, the fillers are those coleus in the back, the begonia, and the spiller is going to be the sweet potato vine. So I think these planters already look pretty cute. It's quite cold here still in Alberta, Canada. It gets down to five degrees Celsius at night. So I do have to take these in at night for the first week or two until it gets a bit warmer here. But hopefully by mid June or so, they should be nice and full. And when I give you guys a summer tour of our home or of our porch, hopefully these will look, look nice and full and I'll show you how they look once they're grown in. So I decided to put these on either side of my front door and I'm going to water them a little bit and again take them in at night until it gets a little bit warmer here. Now I thought of a fun project. I'm going to use the sander that I got and sand my whole door. It was in desperate need of a paint job and I thought because it needs a paint job anyhow, why don't I play around with color? I already had some paint on hand from previous projects. You might remember the paint that I'm going to use from my upcycled potting bench project as well as little A's bedroom headboard. So I sanded down my whole front door and I'm going to give it a fresh new coat of paint. I do love the current color, I always have. It's been this color for seven years ever since we moved into our home, but you can see it was very bubbly. I had to sand out all of these bubbles and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a fresh coat of paint and make it look nice and new. So if you're going to paint a door like I'm doing here, give it a nice sanding. You can sand it by hand or with an orbital sander or a little sander like I have, and then wipe off any of the excess dust, dirt, and the sanding. Then you'll want to tape everything off. You can either remove the door handles altogether, which is probably the best thing to do if you can, or tape them off with some painter's tape. This is my uh, way of shaking a paint can. <laughs> and I finally put a drop cloth down. My husband always bugs me because I don't usually put a drop cloth down and I'm scraping away, but we did just redo our porch flooring last fall we did a slate tile so I don't want to wreck that so what I do first when painting a door is paint the trim areas these inset areas I'm using a brush now sometimes I use a foam roller but this time I'm gonna go ahead and use a brush because I found that painting outside with the foam roller because the paint dries a little bit faster than using paint inside the foam roller was starting to bubble the paint up so I'm just using a regular two inch wide brush 
and using that to apply the paint. So when you're using a brush on a front door, just make sure to use nice long strokes. Go in the same direction every time. So I start with the trim area and then I go around and do all the details around the handle. Then after that, I taped off the inside edge of the door just like this. And then I'm painting the vertical left hand side of the door with my paintbrush. So if you just paint the vertical sections up and down and the horizontal sections left to right, you're going to end up with a lot nicer looking of a paint job in the end. Another tip is try not to paint over sections that have already partially dried because you're going to end up with very distinct brush strokes. Painting outside is a lot different than painting inside because it is very hard to control the temperature. Inside you have a lot of temperature control. So my recommendation is to try to paint on a day when it's not too hot and not too cold. This day that I was doing this was perfect because it was about 15 degrees Celsius. The only bad thing about this day was that it ended up storming in the evening. Thankfully my paint had already set enough that the rain and the storm didn't affect it. So you can see I'm doing my horizontal sections here, left to right. Of course I have kids coming in and out of this video because everybody's at home right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint the vertical sections up and down. One good reason for painting in spring is that there aren't too many bugs yet, so if you have to open and close the door like I'm doing here, you don't have to worry about bugs getting in and out. In Alberta anyway, it's going to depend on where you live. So once I was finished the whole first coat, I let everything dry for about two hours. I like to put my brush in a little plastic bag like this so that I don't have to wash it and then use it again and then I went ahead and did coat number two. It depends on your first color and your second color, but you'll have to do about two to three coats when painting your own door. Here's how our new door color looks. I like it a lot. It's quite a bit different than the first one. Yes, it is a turquoise still, but it's definitely lighter and brighter. I still like the first color, but this one is a nice change. And the wonderful thing about paint is it is very easy to change back if I decide I don't like it after all. All right, so now we're on to the next day. I just did a little bit of a workout downstairs. That's why I'm in my workout clothes. And I knew I was gonna get dirty here in a sec, so I thought I may as well just stay in these and then wash them. I had these outdoor string lights. I bought them a while ago from Amazon. I took down the outside curtains that I had here because they were just getting really old and raggedy. They're about five or six years old. And then instead I put these lights up. Now I'm opening up Cricut Design Space. I have a Cricut cutting machine. I will leave a link to everything about my Cricut down in the description box below. Definitely a handy tool to have. I wanted to create a custom decal for our front door with our house number on it. I had seen something similar on Pinterest on top of kind of an aqua colored door and really loved the look. So I went in Cricut Design Space and came up with a design that I loved just with a very classic looking serif font. Then I sent the design to my Cricut Explore Air 2, used a scrap of black vinyl that I already had. It is a non-permanent vinyl, so I can remove this decal whenever I want without wrecking my door. Then my Cricut cut out that little number sign onto some black vinyl. You can also order things like this on Etsy and have other people make them for you. I will link to some possibilities down in that description box below. Once my vinyl was cut, I weeded out the excess or removed all of the excess vinyl. Then I took what's called transfer tape and I spread it on top of the decal. Then I pressed it down with this Cricut tool and it was ready to apply to my door. Next, I removed the backing and then put the decal where I wanted it. I know in America you say decal, I say decal here in Canada and then I removed the transfer tape. I made a little mistake where that little line went in the wrong spot, so I just had to manually move that after. And I think that looks pretty cute. I love how it contrasts with the new door color. 
So I had to do this a couple times because of the rain and the footprints from our dogs, but I took my husband's pressure washer and I pressure washed the entire floor of our porch as well as the door, all the siding and everything so it was nice and fresh and clean. I truly love this slate that we put in. It did really well over the winter, but it certainly is hard to keep clean. I think that's one of the bad things about getting dark colored flooring or even dark colored cupboards inside. All right, now I had washed all of our cushions from our outdoor sectional, which is an annoying job, but it definitely feels good because our dogs had used them a lot over the winter. They were quite dirty. And then I stuffed all of the interiors back in the exteriors of our couch cushions. And this sectional I got from the brick last year, they sent it to me. If it's still available, I will leave it down in the description box below. You might remember this bench that I built a couple weeks ago for our master bedroom. I was just wanting to experiment with it outside. I thought it was the perfect shape and size for out here as well. So let me know down in those comments below if you like this bench better in our master bedroom, which I will link to below, or if you like it as a sort of coffee table out on our porch like I have here. I can't really decide which one I like better. Now I'm just arranging all of the cushions how I like them and then moving this bench to use as a sort of coffee table here on our porch. For the steps, I really wanted some real lavender but just haven't been able to find it yet. As you know, it's not a great time to shop and the curbside greenhouse didn't have any lavender. So I'm just using some faux lavender and some mulch, putting it in some vintage buckets on our porch. And this wreath I got from Michaels last year in their clearance and it's just sort of a lavender, a faux lavender wreath and I love how it looks on our new colored front door. This mat is a patio mat and I got it last year or the year before perhaps. I think it was from Real Canadian Superstore. I would have rather purchased a new mat for our front porch, but I thought this one worked for now. I liked how the colors looked with our front door and the size is a little bit large for an entry rug, but I think it's gonna work. Then I had these faux boxwood, I've had them for years. We can't grow boxwood here in Alberta, so I like the look of faux mixed in with the real flower pots that I made. I'm also taking some of my old rubber boots that I don't wear anymore and placing some faux tulips inside until we can get our real tulips popping up. Also this little lantern I'm using as a decoration and these lanterns, I found them at HomeSense five or six years ago and then the white ones I found at Ikea and I love using them as decor any season of the year. So I placed some on our steps and I placed some near our door by all of the plants. These cushions I made from napkins and some glue. I will leave that down in the description box below if you wanna see that tutorial. I already had them, so I just usually play musical pillows. I put these outside and some different ones inside. And then I put this one on my great grandpa's rocking chair that he made and tidied up the rest of the porch. All right, now I'm taking a break and I wanna show you how I make some whipped coffee. I start by pulling two shots of espresso with my Breville espresso machine. Then I'm putting two to three teaspoons of sweetener. I use a granulated sweetener called monk fruit. And then I take my handheld mixer and I beat that like crazy. So probably about three to five minutes until it gets a caramel color and it is nice and foamy. I like this recipe better than the traditional whipped or Dalgona coffee because it has less sugar and it uses real espresso. Then you can spoon this delightful whipped coffee on top of your favorite milk over ice. This is absolutely delicious and a lot less sweet than the Dalgona coffee that's trending right now. I really love this style. I'll leave the recipe down in the description box below. Here's our dog Tippy. She is 15 years old this year and she is enjoying our newly decorated and cleaned porch for spring. I'm so happy with how this turned out and again I just love the challenge of being able to use what I have on hand and I also love that I was able to support a local greenhouse by doing some online shopping and some curbside pickup. I also encourage you to try this whipped coffee. It is absolutely delicious. I will leave that recipe down in the description box below. And don't be afraid of using what you have to make your home look beautiful this spring. Mm -hmm. 